TV, I'm Raquel Perez. And I'm Blair Stenvik. I hope you had a fun-filled, exciting weekend, because our football squad sure did. That's right, they took on Jesuit in the legendary Holy Bowl. Our, fresh our freshmen and JV squads both enjoyed decisive victories in their battles with Jesuit. The varsity team put forth a valiant effort, but fell short of victory when Jesuit scored in the last minutes of the fourth quarter. Kristen Miller reports from Hughes Stadium. Hey football fans, I'm Kristen Miller here at the Holy Bowl game, and our team is playing their hearts out. have a new feature and it's our drum line. Holy Bowl is the first time that they have performed. Michael, can you tell us a little bit about our uh, new drum line? Yeah, it's uh, obviously our first time out here. We've been working on this for a while. We've been working hard last year to sort of training musicians, getting enough people to the caliber to have a drum line. We've had this equipment for three years, but we're finally now getting to it and we decided to come out here for Holy Bowl. Pretty good, you know. I'm proud. Pretty, pretty hyped up, you know. Good time. Good time. Woo! Go CB! Yeah! 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 They're doing really good. Asa's doing great. He's picking up these uh, balls and running them in. Uh, the line's doing great. The line's making holes for the backs and everything. The D's doing great. And that guy likes him too. We're here, CB, with the most wildest crew I've ever seen. As you can see, the fans were truly pumped up. CB led one of the best Holy Bowls in recent history. Jesuits touchdown in the final three minutes enabled them to come out with the victory. I couldn't be prouder of our kids. I told them the days of Jesuit whooping us are long gone, and the, the good news is they know that as well as we know that. So we'll get them. That's twice that uh, we let him off the hook since I've been here, but that's not going to happen anymore. Though everyone in the stadium thought CB would come out with a victory, unfortunately, Jesuit came out on top. Great job, Falcons. You should be proud of yourselves. This has been Kristen Miller reporting for KBFT Sacramento. There is one space remaining for this year's trip to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. The trip will be from this Thursday to Sunday. The total cost for this trip is $511 and is due by tomorrow to Miss Green in room 205. Do you ever find yourself asking, what would Jack Bauer do? The Country the Brand Need 24 Club. It will be having its first meeting on Wednesday during lunch in room 204. If you are interested in joining the wrestling team, there will be sign-ups held on Wednesday during lunch in the quad. Be sure to sign up if you are interested. There will be a meeting for anyone interested in becoming part of the Amigos de las Americas. Amigos offers students the chance to spend the time outside of the U.S., enhance their Spanish-speaking skills, help out places where people aren't as fortunate, and make lifelong friendships while helping the community. Come to room 701 after school on Wednesday if you are interested. The fall sports rally is this Wednesday during Falcon Flex. That means you may not leave during Falcon Flex, and clubs cannot meet at that time. You can wear jeans as long as you wear your spirit shirts. Doctor, I can't explain it. I wake up at night and I have the urge to play music or do stand-up comedy. 
Other times I feel like I need to recite poetry or sing. It's also strange. From your test results and uh, your symptoms, I see there's only one possible cure for you. You're gonna have to try out for open life. Bands bring a demo tape. Bands bring a demo tape. Bands bring a demo tape. Wait, is that Azusa Pacific? If you are a senior, then it is time for you to start applying to college. To assist you, your unofficial transcripts will be distributed to your during homeroom today. If you don't receive one, see your homeroom teacher. There will be numerous colleges' representatives visiting our campus in the near future. Today, San Francisco University and Drew University will be here. On October 1st, four schools will be represented. Azusa Pacific University, Northwest Christian College, the University of Oregon, and the University of California, San Diego will all make an appearance on Tuesday, October 2nd. Notre Dame University will be on campus. The deadline to register for the October 6th SAT has passed, but you can still attempt to be a standby registrant. For more information, go to collegeboard.com. If you are planning to take the October 27th ACT, you now have until this Wednesday to register. Go to the website below for more information. The registration date may have been extended, but you still need to hurry. The Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture will be holding its Architecture College and Career Expo at the USC on Saturday, September 29th, beginning at 10 a.m. Students and parents from around the country will have the opportunity to meet with school representatives and explore the exciting careers available in architecture. Information is available at the website below. MIT invites you to join them for an information session on September 29th at Davis Senior High School in the Multipurpose Room from 2 to 3 p.m. Go to www.mitadmissions.org for more information. Notre Dame University invites you to an information program on Monday, October 1st. It will, it will be held in the Loretto High School Library at 7 p.m. Good morning, CB, and welcome to another edition of KBFT Sports. Before we discuss the eminent Holy Bowl, we have some other sports news to announce. On Friday, the men's varsity battled the Rio, varsity soccer, battled the Rio, Rio Americano Raiders, but unfortunately, the Falcons fell 2-1. to one. The cross-country team ran an exceptionally well at Bret Hart Invitational. Jason Howard, in fourth place, once again, led the CB runners with a strong 16 minutes and 39 seconds, followed closely by Jose Nieto and 7th, Johnny Soto in 8th, Greg Hufford in 10th, Elliot Wenzel in 11th, Eric Little in 14th, and George in 16th. Our men's water polo team wasn't in action this weekend, but Raquel Perez went out and interviewed the team on this year's prospects. Hey there, water polo fans. I'm Raquel Perez reporting from the San Pinal Community Center, where our Falcons are taking on the Franklin Wildcats. I want you, the team, to find out more. How is the season looking for our Falcons this year? This year, our season looks very well. We look like we're going to go pretty far this year, maybe playoffs, hopefully. But we seem to be doing real, really well in all our games. And we all, as a whole, did pretty well. We did lots of good passing, good shooting, good everything. So we're working really well as a team. We had a good game today, um, 1 by 10, which is better than <laughs> our last game that we had. So, um, you know, just try to keep improving every game. We're doing all right. We're uh, looking pretty good, but we got some tough teams like Ponderosa. Uh, they should be pretty tough, but we beat them last year. We're doing pretty good, definitely making a lot of improvement, and day to day we make a lot of improvements. We did a lot of good things for the team, and that's really how I preach to these guys that, you know, there's not one person that matters. It's, it's a team effort because you can't win a water pool game, and there's most sports you can't win without everyone contributing. Our Falcons drowned Franklin's Wildcats 14-9. They have no problem with next week's game. And now it's time for Holy Bowl. 
Both our freshmen and JV were victorious. Freshmen won a very close game of 7-6, to six, and JV absolutely smashed Jesuit 41-0. Great job, guys. And now for varsity. At the start of the game, it appears that Jesuit was going to take control. The Marauders took the opening kickoff and ran 62 yards in eight plays and scored a six-yard touchdown. But our Falcons' defense tightened, and our offense came alive in the second quarter as they produced a 12-play, 75-yard drive with crafty quarterback Asa Jackson scoring on a nine-yard and around six, second, six minutes and three seconds left, 33 seconds left. Seven seconds later, Jack, Jackson scooped up a fumble and ran it back to 26 yards for a touchdown. James Ward's kick made it 14 to six. Then Jesuit scored and missed the extra point, making the game 14 to 12 at the half. Fresh out of the locker and onto the field, junior Marcus McDaniels returned the second half kickoff for a 90-yard touchdown and a lead 21 to 12. Jesuit caught up, making the score 21 to 19. Then the Marauders scored again with the score 21 to 24. Josh Tucker then ran 14 yards for a touchdown with 6.35 left in the fourth quarter. Asa Jackson made the two-point conversion, and the score was now 29 to 24. Falcons with the lead. Then the inevitable happened. Jesuit scored with two minutes left. The Falcons were now behind 29 to 32. QB Asa Jackson tried to gain yardage by passing to senior Larry Morla, but Jesuit foiled all attempts. Our mighty Falcons fell in a well-fought Holy Bowl. If it's any consolation football, guys, you were awesome and made many of our weekends incredible. That's all we have for you today, CB. Have a great Monday and keep selling those magazines if you want Friday off. Remember that Wednesday is our last turn-in day.